Today, I will be teaching as to how to do regression in R. Please check my previous video as to how to import the data. So, you can see the uh, data is on the screen. We have got here the log of GDP, employment and CPI. So, since I have uh, imported the these variables, this comes out automatically, view regression in R. But with this, you can't analyze your data, you have to attach the data. So, the command will be attach. So, when it appears, you just click over there. And what is the file name? So, the file name is regression. When you prompt, it will pop up and then you can click so it has been attached even before doing the regression analysis it is essential to download certain packages that I have already uh, taught in the previous video so I am just going directly as to what has to be attached so for the first one is you have to type library and you have to type FB6. So, why FB6 is downloaded? It is to find out the descriptive statistics. Here I won't be doing it because I have already done in my previous video. The next is library LM test. Now, this is the linear model test. This is for the regression purpose that also I have to attach so library is done over here after that you have to type library and you have to keep your T series this is uh, required to check the residuals that is we have got assumptions in um, regression so to test the residuals this particular uh, a T series is required. The next one you have to go to library and then you have to type far away. Far away this package is useful to find out whether there is multi collinearity between the variables. And the last one is you have to give the command options. in bracket skype in is equal to triple nine what is the purpose of this to convert the exponential d value into the absolute value that is the uh, purpose behind it so once when everything is done you have to give a command for the regression so how the command has to be given so you have to type y is equal to lm that is the linear model test and in bracket you have to ln gdp and with the help of shift key you have to press this is a function or depends on this particular symbol lies to the left of the 1 that is numerical 1 so with the help of shift key you can get this particular symbol and then depends on ln employment so when it gets activated just add plus you have to use a plus sign ln cpi so when this is done you have to click enter later you have to type the command summary summary of what summary of model y and then click enter so the results appear so you see the coefficient has come over here the standard error the t value and the respective p value so the 3 refers to it is significant at 1% level 3 asterisks here you can see so and the respective codes reference 
then you can see your multiple r square value here your adjusted r square and your f value and the p value uh, is significant to show the model is fit the interpretation of this particular part is already done in e views as well as in spss so you can very well verify over there and you can uh, do your analysis over there now you have to check for the assumptions so first assumption to be checked is the mean of the residual should be equal to or should be as good as zero so for that what should be the command first you have to the error term because you're going to see the mean of the red residual should be as good as zero so error term is equal to residuals residuals of what your model y and then just give enter so once you enter your first you have to check your first assumption that is mean and in bracket mean has appeared so once you click over the bracket automatic uh, automatically comes over click et and then so the first test is the mean of the residual should be as good as zero so it has uh, pass the test so there's nothing to worry over here the next we have to test the normality for that you have to take jacob test so it has come over here jacob test and you have to give the e t you have to type that is the error term and then click you can see that the p value is not significant that it is greater than 0 0.05 so you can say that the uh, that is the data is normally distributed so there is nothing to worry so why you have to put et over here for mean and jacobera test the reason because these both are saved in error terms that's why you have put ET in the bracket. Next, we have to see the Durbin Watson test. For that, DW Durbin Watson test. So it appears here you will be typing the alphabet Y. That is a model Y. To check whether there is serial or autocorrelation, both are the same. And then you have to click enter so as per the data there it doesn't suffer from serial correlation or there is no auto correlation suppose there is serial correlation then you have to take the lag value of the dependent variable at the end of this video i will teach you as to how I, you have to do next you have to test the whether the data is homoscedastic or not for that you have to type it as bp test bp test in brackets you have to put it as y and then click ok so again you can see the p value is greater than 0 0.05 so uh, the residues are homo scedastic so there is nothing to worry about it and the last test to be done is far away as already told far away is meant for what it is meant to check multicollinearity so for that vif in brackets it will be your y so you can see dw test your bp test and far away is used in overall regression that's why you are using the word or the model y there so you can see uh, the employment is 5 point and uh, uh, cpi is 5.3 you can very well uh, carry on with it because uh, the maximum threshold is, is 10 certain uh, researchers they take it as 5 certain researchers they go up to 10 so you can very well carry on with the data 
so when this is done when everything is done next you have to check the robustness of the model now you have to check the robustness of the model for that what what has to be done so your error term et model y is equal to your model y put a dollar sign and type residuals residuals once you have done with it just click enter so why i have put it in caps that's why it is wrong because here all i have put y in a in a small format that is why it is it is not accepting any with the help of arrow key i can activate the previous command and i can change this y into small y now you will get it so it has come over so there's no error next we have to see the fit so for that it is your name that is fit that is your name means you can fix any name for it fit is equal to y dollar sign and put it as fitted values fitted values then later again click enter and type it as fit now these are the words which you are choosing these are the commands so it should be accordingly now we will get the fit values now these are in log form now since it is in log form you have to convert that into an absolute form for that what will be the command so the command will be you have to give a name for it we will keep it as since it is fitted value so fgdp fgdp is equal to 2.718 hat and type fit when it act when it has come when it pops up you just accept that then it will be easy so this is done to convert the log value into absolute values and then click enter and then click the same name which was given f g d p and then click enter now you can see uh, the log values are converted into absolute values now you have to plot it so when you plot it you have to be very careful in this aspect in the sense that you have taken the variable in log format that time you can't use the absolute values if you take the uh, actual value of it at that moment you can use this but now since it is in the log format we will use the log aspect alone so how it has to be done for that you have to type plot so plot appears plot so which have to plot it is ln gdp this popped up ln gdp comma and it is fit why did i put fit is because i will just show you this fgdp is one which we have converted in from log to absolute values fit is still in the fit is still in log values that's why i have placed the log values over there that is this is also in log fit is also in log that's why i have placed it and then click enter no sorry i'll just delete it then i click enter so you can see to your right hand side the dotted lines appear that is the difference between the 
actual and predicted value appear over the screen. Now you have to draw the AB line. Now we will just draw AB line. It appears on the screen. Whenever it appears or whenever it pops up, see that you are using it so that you need not put the bracket. There you have to put your linear model test. Then again in bracket your ln gdp yes and the function sign with that of your fit why did you use a fit is because that is also in log form and later click enter so you can see the line is um, perfectly uh, done so what does it infer you have to infer it very correctly over here the first part if the difference between the actual value and the predicted value is positive then the data points will be above the regression line if the difference between the actual value and predicted value is negative then the data points will be below the uh, regression line so the line of best fit is when the actual value that is the difference between the actual value and predicted value is zero always see that the less difference between the regression line is much more desirable so now your entire regression is done over i just earlier told that if suppose suppose if you face the problem of serial correlation so what has to be done for that i just give you the command that is lag that is you are going to give the name for it that is lag gdp is equal to next comes the command lag in bracket ln gdp now this is done only when you face serial correlation or autocorrelation and how will you type the model for it at that moment you have to i won't be uh, extending over it that is I won't be going further with this I'll be stopping over so you have to give a name as say y is equal to as usual your lm lm in brackets what will be your first one will be lag gdp sorry ln GDP depends on your lag your lag GDP plus sorry plus your L M L N employment plus your L N CPI. So this will be your model if the residue suffers from serial correlation. If it is heteroscedasticity, you have to convert the um, your variables into log form. If there is multicollinearity, you have to remove any one of your uh, independent variables. This is how you have to deal with the regression analysis. Hope you are clear with the data. Thank you for listening.